All right, now that we know how to make our hypotheses, what we want to be able to do is test the distributions against each other. Because you're not just testing one proportion or two proportions, you're testing a whole array of proportions all at once. So what you want to do is you want to see, does my observed value, or do my observed values differ from what I expected? So the expected value would be the counts, expected frequencies, excuse me, would be the counts that you expect from your null hypothesis. If your null hypothesis is true and the proportions are like you expect, then you should have certain numbers for each of the categories. And then the observed is what you actually got in each of the categories when you did a sample or an experiment. So let's look at this example here. So we have a gambler who rolls a six-sided die, and the observed values are below. So here they are. So he rolled the die, or she, could be he or she, rolled the die, and they got a 12 or a 1 12 times, a 2 7 times, a 3 14 times, and so on. And you look at those numbers and you think, oh, those aren't really all equal to each other. So the question is, is this die fair or not? Now we assumed up here, we saw this one earlier, that the die is fair. You assume that going into it, which means you expect each side to appear about one-sixth of the time. And you use that proportion to figure out your expected values. So what we first have to do is find the sum here. So I add up these numbers with my calculator, and I got that the sum was equal to 60 right here. So what I do is I say, look, if I'm going to go roll this die 60 times, then how much do I expect each side to show up? Well, let's start with one. How many times do I expect one to show up? I expect it to show up one sixth of the time. And one sixth of 60 would be 10 because one sixth times 60 makes 10. And since this die is assumed to be fair, that would be the same for two, three, four, five, right? They'd all be 10 because you're assuming that it's equal. Notice, by the way, that the sum of the expected values should be equal to the same number as the sum of the observed. So you're saying, hey, I'm going to roll this die 60 times. I expect each of these sides to show up 10 times each. Right? What they actually showed up was this. And the question now becomes, is this observed frequency distribution so different from this expected frequency distribution that we think the die is loaded? That's the six million dollar question. We'll figure out how to run that test later. All right, now that's one where everything was assumed to be equally likely, which is pretty common with dice. But what about if they're not assumed to be equally likely? What if each category has its own percentage? All right, a personnel director believes that the distribution of the reasons workers leave their jobs is different from the one shown in the graph below. The director randomly selects 200 workers who recently left their jobs and records each re worker's reason for doing so. The results are shown in the table below. All right, so we think that 41% are going to leave because of limited advancement potential. 25% are going to leave because of lack of recognition. 15% are going to leave because of low salary or benefits. 10% leave because it's, they're unhappy with management. 9% leave because they are bored. So there's the percentages that you think are going to happen, which is technically your null hypothesis. Now you went, or you, this personnel director went and asked 200 people and got these responses. And notice I found the sum just to make sure, and indeed it's 200 down here. So now what I want to do is I want to figure out the expected value for each of the categories. But I'm going to assume that they're all equal, not the way a die was assumed to be all equal. So what I want to do is I want to say, look, out of 200 workers, if indeed 41% leave it because of limited advancement potential, then what I should do is take 41% times 200. That's the formula that says right up here. Your expected value is your N times your P value, which should look a little bit familiar to you because you saw that back in the binomial distribution chapter in chapter 6. So you're going to say 200, which is your N, times your proportion for group 1, which is the 41%. So you take 200 times 41% and you get 82. If you don't believe me, let me show you. 200 times 0 0.41 is 82. All right, then lack of recognition you think should be about 25%. So you take 25% of 200 and you're going to get 50. Then you take 15% of 200 and you're going to get 30 and so on and so on. If you add up these numbers, 82, 50, I mean, if you've done this right, 82 plus 50 plus 30 plus 20 plus 18 is in fact 200. And that's good. You want it to be the same number in both groups right there. 
that's a way to check yourself. All right, so we found the expected frequencies and placed them in the table. As a quick reminder, how do we find the degrees of freedom? That's the number of categories minus one. Okay, so the number of categories is five. One, two, three, four, five categories. Five take away one would be four, so that's the degrees of freedom. Now, as for our hypotheses, the null hypothesis is basically set up here with this table, so you or this picture, I should say. So you type that up and you'd say, the proportion for this limited advancement is 41%. The proportion for recognition would be 25% and so on. And the alternative to that is that at least one of those is different. The proportion for why people leave it, their jobs is different from what we expect in the null. So let me type that up one second. All right, so I typed that one up. It's a long one. So we have the null says the proportion for limited advancement is 0.41. The proportion for Lack of recognition is 0.25, low salary and benefits is 0.15, unhappy with management is 0.10, and then board is 0.09. And then the alternative to that is that the distribution of proportions for why people leave their jobs is different than assumed in the null hypothesis. Again, there's lots of ways you can write that. You can say the distribution of proportions is different from um, the null. You can say at least one of those proportions is different than what was assumed in the null, et cetera, et cetera. There's lots of ways to write it. All right, let's pause right there, even though I know we have time to go on. Um, let's let the next video be where we actually conduct the hypothesis test. So let's stop here. We showed how, in this video how to find expected values for both when we assume equality amongst the proportions, like say with a, um, a die right here, you assume the die was fair, so everything was equal. And then one where they weren't all assumed to be equal, where every single category had its own proportion. And that was how to find the, find the expected values there. And then just a little review of how to find the null and alternative hypotheses as well as the degrees of freedom. All right, I'll see you back here to conduct the test in the next video.